You'll hear it. We are now on the record. Thank you so much. Good morning, everyone. Welcome to the fourth quarter meeting of the uh, New York State Fire Prevention and Building Code Council. Uh, my name is Matt Tebow. I am here today as the designee for Acting Secretary Brendan Hughes. Secretary Rosanna Rosado uh, resigned and moved on to uh, greener pastures. She is now the commissioner of DCJS. Um, anyway, winter is upon us today. Uh, it, it went from nice and warm and sort of thunderstorms last night to, uh, to brisk and cold outside. Uh, hopefully the snow stays away a little longer for us here in Albany. I know that our friends out west have already seen plenty of it. Um, we are in person in Albany uh, again, uh, at least I am, uh, and we also have the WebEx platform uh, here in front of us. Uh, Kevin, do you want to just run through the, the, the way we conduct business on the WebEx platform? Sure. So as Matt may have already mentioned, pursuant to Chapter 417 of the Laws of 2021, this meeting is being held remotely by WebEx conference call. The law indicates the public shall have the ability to view and listen to the proceeding, and the meeting shall be recorded and later transcribed. As a result, today's meeting is being held via WebEx instead of a public meeting open to the public to attend in person. But the public was provided access to register to attend the call, and then a call and number was provided so, they, so that any interested members of the public can listen to the proceedings. Additionally, the meeting is being recorded and will be later transcribed. Because of these special features, we ask that the co-council members record their vote individually for both establishing quorum and on individual items as needed. At this time, everyone's microphone should be muted. Any co-council member, panelist, or division staff wishing to speak, remember to unmute your microphone, state your full name, then speak. Anyone from the public wishing to address the code council during the public comment period should send a message through WebEx to either me or my co-host, China Clark. We will then collect some information from you, such as your name and address and who you are representing. Hey, Kevin, for the purposes of quorum, why don't you read the, read the roll? We'll unmute everybody and, uh, and work our way through. Matt Tebow. I'm present. Ben Keller. Present. Michael Weber. Present. Vincent Rapachulo. Present. Keith Wen. Here. Joseph Stefano. Present. Claudia Bramer. Present. Sean Hamlin. Present. Timothy DeRusher. I'm here. Robert Hughes. Here. William Tang. That broke up a little bit. Was that Bill Tyne you asked for? Bill Tyne, yep. yep. Thank you, Bill. Patrick Dolan. Here. Dominic Marinelli. Here. And uh, Joseph Toomey. I'll call your name, but I don't believe you're here. All right, we have 13. Okay, we have a quorum of 13. Joe Toomey is having some, some connection issues. If we notice him in the public room, we will promote him to our room if we can. And I will note his presence when he arrives. Um, Okay, we have a busy agenda today, and I think we can move on to it now. Uh, lots of MRLESs, uh, but I think we can move through them pretty expeditiously. Uh, Kevin, are there any changes to the uh, agenda? So we have a couple of uh, minor changes to the agenda. Under agenda item number three, the town of North Salem has actually rescinded local law number four. So I will discuss that under agenda item four. And the town of Geneva has repealed local law number three and adopted local law number seven. Uh, law number seven was included in the co-council package of information that I sent out prior to the meeting and it is posted on the website. Um, the only other thing is the order in which the municipalities will be heard may change slightly based on how the conversation goes today. Okay, thank you, Kevin. All right, moving to agenda item two. The draft minutes for our meeting, our third quarter meeting of September 16, 2021. Um, are there any, you received this in your packets uh, last week. Are there any changes, proposed changes? Okay, hearing none, I'll make a motion 
uh, to approve the minutes of September 16th, 2021. Can I have a second for that, please? Bill Tyne, second. Was that Bill Tyne? Yes. Okay. Bill Tyne seconds the motion. This is a voice vote. All in favor of approving the minutes of September 16th, 2021, please signify by saying aye. 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 Any opposed? Sounded like it passed. Okay. The meetings are uh, the minutes of the third quarter meeting have been adopted. Moving to agenda item agenda item number three: more restrictive energy code filings under energy law section 11109. At this point, I'm going to kick it to Emma. Emma's going to take us for a ride. Thanks, Matt. Good morning, everyone. <laughs> Since the September meeting, the division has received several filings for more restrictive local energy codes. And as you have seen in the previous meetings, as you might expect, each local law is slightly different. Um, the, at the request of the council at the last meeting, the, the DOS staff worked with NYSERDA to develop a model local law that would help adopt New York stretch in the most effective manner. According to NYSERDA, they have already started making it available as a recommendation to municipalities that are considering adopting stretch. Should those municipalities choose to use the model local law, this could result in future filings that avoid the types of issues that we have seen up until now, and it would contribute to a more streamlined process going forward. One common trend among municipalities adopting New York stretch as a supplement to the New York State Energy Code is to sever a provision in section R403.6.2, which requires mechanical ventilation through the use of either an energy recovery ventilator or a heat recovery ventilator, only for residential occupants. Chris Roy is here today representing NYSERDA to speak of the effect of severing that provision on the stringency of New York stretch or lack thereof as compared to the state energy code. So Chris, would you please go ahead? Thanks, Emma. Um, good morning, everybody. And thank you, for, thank you for the opportunity to present to the council again today. Um, as a brief reminder, New York Stretch Energy Code 2020, which was published by NYSERDA in July of 2019, is intended to be a locally adopted supplement to the State Energy Code, not a replacement of the State Energy Code. Um, as a supplement, the New York Stretch amends existing Energy Code requirements and adds new requirements to both commercial and residential chapters. Several local governments that adopted the State Energy Code as supplemented by New York Stretch as a more restrictive local energy code elected to omit, as Emma mentioned, uh, from adoption, the addition of new section R403.6.2, which is titled Balanced and Heat Recovery and Energy Recovery Ventilation System. This is a mandatory requirement in New York Stretch pertaining to whole house mechanical ventilation. Uh, as a new requirement, added to the State Energy Code by New York Stretch, local governments that omit section R403.6.2 would simply continue to enforce existing whole house mechanical ventilation requirements found in state uniform and energy codes. Removing section R403.6.2 from New York Stretch does not render existing whole house mechanical ventilation requirements less restrictive. The net result of omitting new section R403.6.2 from local adoption of the state energy code as supplemented by New York stretch remains that a local energy code thus adopted is more stringent than the state energy code. Thank you. Thank you, Chris. I'm just going to jump in here and note that Joe Toomey has joined us. He joined us at 10, 11 a.m. Okay. Any, are there any questions for Chris? Yeah, I have one. It's Robert Hughes. Um, so, a municipal, so a municipality can pull out certain parts of the stretch code when they're adopting it because 
they're not making the uniform code any less, but they can kick out certain parts. Is that correct of the stretch code? So, uh, I mean, I sort of published the New York stretch as a model more restrictive local energy code. You know, it's, it's a model stretch code. Um, municipalities can adopt as much or as little of it as they see fit. Um, you know, and, and as mentioned here in, just so it's clear for the council and everybody, you know, on this call today, um, removing this, this particular section, this particular requirement section R403.6.2 um, does not render the overall code um, less restrictive than the state energy code. And in fact, it remains more restrictive than the state energy code. Mr. Chairman, this is uh, Tim DeRusha. I have a question then. So is, were there some proposals that had adopted the stretch, but deleted the heat recovery provisions in the stretch code? And that's why this is being brought up? That is correct, Tim. Thank you. Are there any other questions? Uh, Claudia, I saw Thank your hand you. Yep, yeah, thanks. I'm really glad to hear that there was a model local loss to help with that. Um, I'd like to see it if you don't mind sending it out to the council members. And um, is there any um, additional movement? I talked to Kevin briefly about this um, to adopt the stretch um, as a mandatory part of the code to make it uniform across the state. So, as we, as we discussed the last time, that requires uh, a legislative change. Legislature is coming back into session in January. Uh, I believe we're on track to propose that either as a standalone or as part of the, the budget. But obviously, I can't <laughs> I can't speak to that yet. Um, but uh, without that change, I, I think we would have great difficulty. Uh, that change being the ten year payback provision. Uh, we would have great difficulty uh, with making the stretch code the energy code of New York State. Uh, assuming that that can get through the legislature uh, and, and is signed by the governor, uh, I, I think we uh, that is the plan, is to move forward in that direction. Uh, I think we're probably looking at the 2023 time frame for that, Kevin. That, I think 23, 24, yep. somewhere in there. So that's I think that's where we are in the process. Thanks. Any for other the questions? Sure. No problem. Any other questions? Okay. Hearing none, Emma, back to you. Take us take us on through. Thanks, Matt. The town of Newfield adopted New York stretch and severed this uh, aforementioned mechanical ventilation provision. The local law was filed with the division within 30 days of adoption. Uh, and based on NYSERDA's assessment indicating that even when this mechanical ventilation provision is severed, New York stretch is still more restrictive than the state energy code, the division recommends that the code council find that the local energy code adopted by the town of Newfield is more restrictive than the state energy code. Okay. Thank you, Emma. Do we have any questions on the town of Newfield? Okay. Hearing none, I'm going to turn it over to Peniota to read a potential motion that will be made by me. Go ahead, Peniota. For your consideration, on August 12th, 2021, the town of Newfield, the town, adopted local law number three of 2021, which amended the town of Newfield code, the town code, to adopt the New York Stretch Energy Code 2020, New York Stretch, except for section R403.6.2 of New York Stretch regarding mechanical ventilation requirements. The local law was filed with the Department of State's State Records Unit pursuant to Municipal Home Rule Law on October 19th, 2021. On August 19th, 2021, 
less than 30 days after the adoption of local law number three of 2021, the town filed a copy of local law number three of 2021 with the Department of State for the Code Council's review pursuant to subdivision two of section 11-109 of the energy law. On July 10th, 2020, and September 16th, 2021, NYSERDA presented to the Code Council a report indicating that New York Stretch Energy Code 2020 version 1.0, which modifies certain provisions of the 2018 International Energy Conservation Code and ASHRAE Standard 90.1-2016, is more restrictive than the currently effective version of the State Energy Code. On December 3rd, 2021, NYSERDA presented to the Code Council report indicating New York Stretch Energy Code 2020 version 1.0 with section R403.6.2 removed is still more restrictive than the currently effective version of the state energy code. The town of Newfield's local energy conservation construction code as amended by local law number three of 2021 adopts New York Stretch by providing that the New York Stretch Energy Code 2020 published by NYSERDA shall be enforced as a supplement to the 2020 ECCC NYS, provided, however, that Section R403.6.2 of New York Stretch regarding mechanical ventilation requirements is severed and not adopted, and the less restrictive ventilation requirements of the 2020 Residential Code of New York State, Section M1505.4.1, are retained. I move that the Code Council determine pursuant to subdivision two of section 11-109 of the energy law that the town of Newfield's local energy conservation construction code as amended by local law number three of 2021 is more restrictive than the currently effective version of the state energy code. The Code Council makes no finding or determination regarding any provision in the town of Newfield's local energy code that may be a local standard for construction within the meaning of section 379 of the executive law and nothing herein should be construed as the Code Council's approval or adoption of any such local standard for construction. So moved. Thank you, Penny Oda. We'll give you a second to get some water. <laughs> may I have a second of that motion? Second. second. Pat. Three people said it. I heard Pat okay. say his name. All right. So <laughs> Pat seconds the motion. Is there any discussion on the motion? Are there any other motions? Okay. Very done. We'll vote on the motion. Kevin, if you'll call the roll, please. Matt Tebow. I vote yes. Ben Keller. Yes. Michael Weber. Yes. Vincent Rapachulo. Yes. Keith Wen. Yes. Joseph DiStefano. Yes. Claudia Bramer. Yes. Joseph Toomey. Yes. Sean Hamlin. Yes. Timothy DeRusher. Yes. Robert Hughes. Yes. William Tyne. Yes. Patrick Dolan. Yes. Dominic Marinelli. Yes. Unanimous. Motion unanimously carries. Kevin, if you'll let the town of Newfield know of the decision of the council. And that moves us to our next one. I won't say what the next one is because you might be jumping around. Go ahead. What's next? <laughs> Uh, the village of Mountain Falls okay. similarly adopted New York stretch severing the aforementioned mechanical ventilation provision. The local law was filed with the division within 30 days of adoption, and again, based on NYSERDA's assessment, indicating that even when this mechanical ventilation provision is severed, New York stretch is still more restrictive than the State Energy Conservation Construction Code. The division recommends that the Code Council find that the local energy code adopted by the village of Motor Falls is more restrictive than the state energy code. However, there are some procedural issues with the local law, and I will let our legal counsel explain what those issues are. Pani Yota. Uh, thank you, Emma. So everyone might recall that at the last meeting in September, the village of Montour Falls had submitted um, for the Code Council's review the local law number one of 2021. And at that time, the Code Council had voted that it was not more restrictive. 
since that time, as Emma has pointed out, we've received local law number one of 2021 amended. Um, although the substance of the law is what we are reviewing and what is the role of the code council, we would just like to note that it has not been filed with the state records unit here at the Department of State because it is number one and that was already received by the Department of State. So they, they need to new, newly um, renumber the local law um, in order to file it with state records. So they, they will be contacted the village here by the state records unit regarding this. Um, but we just wanted to ensure that the code council members are all aware that we are looking at the substance of the law and it's not based on procedural um, items. Okay, are there any questions for either Emma or Peniota? Okay. Still time. Okay. Bill, go ahead. Yeah. I'm just trying to understand that the substance versus the procedural elements. Does this mean that if we review this and approve it, that we're not going to see this again? If you go back to the town and ask them to renumber it and resubmit officially, we're done and we don't hear it again? Or do we still have to consider it formally when everything has been corrected procedurally at a later date? Um, I did speak with council. Yes, I, I did speak with council for um, our division of corporations and state records, and they did confirm that the, the local government, they do allow them to submit the local law with the correct number. So, so they will be allowed to do that. And then at that point in time, it would be effective upon filing with state records. But, but once again, what we've received in our state records right now, they, they just can't accept it as is with that number. Um, so, so if they do renumber it and submit it, it, my understanding is that that would be accepted at that time in the state records unit. But, but to, I think to Bill's question, we don't need to, if we approve it today, based on what I believe is about to be the motion that you're about to read, then we don't need to see it again, right? The, our, our approval will be updated with the new number. Is that correct? Correct. So, so, so if the local government resubmits exactly what they previously had done and just correct the numbering, that's fine. If they obviously change the language, then that would be a new local law. So, right. but if it's just correcting the numbering, um, because again, the way our system works here in the state records unit is that it has to be consecutive numbering for in order for them to file it in their system. Um, and I, I believe for this village, since they did local law one that we had heard in September, they've actually filed other local laws two and three. So as long as they haven't done anything recently, um, it should be number four most likely. Um, but that they, they would need to just change that numbering and submit it with state records. So again, substantively, if they change the local law, that would require a new filing with us if they adopt a new local law, because that would be a, a, a new amended energy code. But if it's just correcting the numbering on the top, state records will accept it. So we are technically approving number one as amended. And they had then have the opportunity to file correctly. And number one, for our approval purposes, just becomes number four, let's say. Is that that's right? Correct. Correct. We are looking at the substance of the local law. Okay. Fine. Joe DiStefano, what if the town takes no action at all? Are we approving something that um, uh, and, and the town doesn't take the correct action by changing the, the local law? What if they have some kind of change or, or how to change an attitude? What, what happens then? So, so if they take no action here, um, as you're aware, uh, local laws in order to be effective have to be filed pursuant to the municipal home rule law so we as the code council and you know members here that are reviewing this for this public body's purpose under the energy law are reviewing it for the substance of the local law we do not review it for procedural issues whether or not the local government has taken all steps necessary to make a law valid is on the part of the local government to ensure that that's done 
that is not on the part of the code council. We are looking at the substance to ensure that what they have adopted is indeed more restrictive than the state energy code. Okay. Chairman, can I ask Emma, is there a piece that is um, exempted out of this one? I'm sorry if I missed that. They severed, they severed the mechanical ventilation provision that Chris Roy explained earlier in okay. the same manner as you feel that you just approved. Yep. Okay. Thank you. You're welcome. And Yoda, is this premature or or are we are we on good legal footing here? We're good. Okay. Okay. And Yoda and Joe being exceptional attorneys, I'm going to I'm going to find comfort in that. And, and I'm gonna have Penny Yoda read a, uh, a potential motion that I'll make unless we have any other questions. All right, Penny Otto, if you could read that motion. For your consideration, on February 18th, 2021, the village of Montour Falls, the village, adopted local law number one of 2021, which amended chapter 62 of the village of Montour Falls code, the village code. By amending the definition of energy code to replace the state energy conservation construction code, the state energy code, with New York Stretch Energy Code 2020, New York Stretch published by NYSERDA. Local law number one of 2021 was filed with the Department of State Records Unit pursuant to municipal home rule law on March 1st, 2021. At the September 16th, 2021 Code Council meeting, the Code Council determined pursuant to subdivision two of section 11-109 of the energy law that the village of Montour Falls local energy conservation construction code as amended by local law number one of 2021 was less restrictive than the currently effective version of the state energy code. On November 4th, 2021, the village adopted local law number one of 2021 amended, which amended chapter 62 of the village code by adopting the state energy code as modified in the manner contemplated by New York stretch, except section R403.6.2, which is added to the 2018 IECC by section 3.11 of New York stretch shall not be deemed to be added to the 2020 ECC CNYS. Local law number one of 2021 amended was not filed with the Department of State's Records Unit pursuant to municipal home rule law. On November 9th, 2021, less than 30 days after the adoption of local, number, local law number one of 2021 amended, the village filed a copy of local law number one of 2021 amended with the Department of State for the Code Council's review pursuant to subdivision two of section 11-109 of the energy law. On July 10th, 2020 and September 16th, 18th, 2021, NYSERDA presented to the Code Council a report indicating that New York Stretch Energy Code 2020 version 1.0, which modifies certain provisions of the 2018 International Energy Conservation Code and ASHRAE Standard 90.1-2016, is more restrictive than the currently effective version of the State Energy Code. On December 3rd, 2021, NYSERDA presented to the Code Council a report indicating New York Stretch Energy Code 2020 version 1.0 with section R403.6.2 removed is still more restrictive than the currently effective version of the State Energy Code. I move that the Code Council determine pursuant to subdivision 2 of section 11-109 of the Energy Law that the Village of Montour Falls Local Energy Conservation Construction Code as amended by Local Law Number 1 of 2021 amended is more restrictive than the currently effective version of the state energy code. The code council makes no finding or determination regarding any provision in the village of Montour Falls local energy code that may be a local standard for construction within the meaning of section 379 of the executive law and nothing herein shall be construed as the code council's approval or adoption of any such local standard for construction. So moved. Okay, Paniota, before I ask for a second, I'm still a bit troubled here. So. I think I'd like to add language here that basically says that this does not, that our approval does not take effect until such time as they file correctly with the division of corporations as required by statute. Are you okay with that change? 
we, we could add that to our motions. That is always the case for every single energy code filing that we receive because municipal home rule law is always applicable and we indicate that to the local governments when we receive the filings as well. Yep. Understood. I, I just, I, I just the way we're sort of taking this out of our normal order is, is I, I just want to make sure we're very clear. So I'll make that motion as amended by me <laughs> and, and I'll ask for a second. Second. Okay, Sean Hamlin second motion do we have any discussion on the motion as i amended my own motion <laughs> okay hearing none kevin if you'll call the roll <clears throat> matt tebow i'll vote yes ben keller yes michael weber yes vincent rapachulo yes keith wen yes Joseph Stefano. Yes. Claudia Bramer. Yes. Joseph Toomey. Yes. Sean Hamlin. Yes. Timothy DeRusher. Yes. Robert Hughes. Yes. William Tyne. Yes. Patrick Dolan. I vote yes. Dominic Marinelli. Yes. Unanimous. Motion carries unanimously. Kevin, if you'll let the village know of the approval and their need to file what I assume will be local law for or some subsequent number uh, before it becomes effective. Okay, Emma, back to you for the next one. Thank you. <laughs> the following three municipalities adopted New York stretch severing the same mechanical ventilation provision mentioned earlier, but also appear to sever other provisions not specifically mentioned. Uh, instead, the language of the local law is so broad or so vague that it is technically impractical for the division to make a determination as far as the stringency of the local co code. Uh, both the town of Portland and the village of Athens adopted a local law that reads in part, and I quote, any provision in the New York Stretch Energy Code 2020, which conflicts with any provision in the Energy Conservation Construction Code of New York State 2020, shall be severed. A provision that severs any and all conflicts with the New York State Energy Conservation Construction Code would likely invalidate all the provisions of the local law and only the state energy code would be enforceable, rendering the local code not more restrictive than the state energy code. The town of Marbletown adopted stretch, and I quote, unless superseded by more restrictive or conflicting provisions adopted by the town of Marbletown or by New York State, end quote. It is also technically impractical to determine the stringency of a local code based on exceptions so broad as to include the entirety of the uniform code, not knowing um, that what judgment, that the town of Marbletown also included language that indicates that conflicted provisions would be severed depending upon the judgment of the code official, which would be problematic for us not knowing what such judgment might be in each instance, or based on unknown future provisions adopted by either the local municipality or the state. For these reasons, the division recommends that the council find that the energy codes adopted by the town of Portland, the village of Athens, and the town of Marbletown are not more restrictive than the state energy codes. Okay, thank you, can Emma. I, can I have a point of order on the previous resolution? Didn't we only vote on the amendment? We didn't vote on the entire res the amended resolution? Wait. I, I believe you made a motion and amended your own motion. So it's all- Right, I, 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 we did not get to a point where we had approved a motion, so I amended it live. Okay. So we were taking the whole thing at the same time, Joe. Okay.
on these? Claudia? You, yeah, Chairman, are you okay for discussion? Yes, so I'm just gonna note real fast here that there is somebody from the town of Cortland on to answer questions if we have a specific question with regard to Cortland, but I think we probably should take these three because of the way we're doing it, we should take these three for discussion purposes together. We do need to vote separately. So with that said, Claudia, any discussion on the on those three? Thank Portland you. Athens or Marble Cone? I heard what Emma, I, I heard the explanation and I, I understand where she's coming from. On the other hand, I'm seeing the way I interpret it is the town is adopting stretch to the extent that it doesn't conflict with anything they already have in place. So they're adding stretch on top of what they have. They're not taking away from the uniform code in any way. Otherwise it wouldn't, it wouldn't be legal anyway, correct? So why can't we let them layer stretch on top as more restrictive? Um, I think I'll defer to our legal counselor to, uh, counsel to answer that. So, Claudia, it appears that I, I know. <laughs> so, Claudia, it appears that you're more focusing on the ones that are trying to compare it to the uniform code. So, taking them apart, the one, the local governments that adopted local laws saying that anything conflicting with the state energy code obviously is in a different category because all of New York stretch is in essence amending or modifying the state energy code. So if you sever those provisions, you're left with the state energy code. Um, the ones that are doing that, looking at the uniform code provisions, if you don't identify exactly what you're severing or uh, you know not going to be complying with, there's no way to know what the requirements are when you're constructing a building because they're not set forth. So the language having it as written like that is what the concern is, that you cannot identify what is or what is not going to be uh, applicable in a given situation. Right, Penny Oda, are, the, are you saying that of these three, um, some or one or the other has a different applicability? I, I'm looking at the three and their yeah, applicability so option. Mm -hmm. Right. So the town of Cortland, if um, you look at that local law, that actually says anything that is conflicting with the state energy code is severed. Any provision in New York stretch that is conflicting or contrary to what's in the state energy, obviously that's not what was intended. And I, I did speak with the um, town attorney with that one. And I think they intended for that to really mean the uniform code, but that's not what it says. So, so unfortunately for that one, that was okay. Uh, yeah. So that, so that one's a little bit in a different category. Um, but the intent was the same idea, which is why Emma had grouped them together as Athens and Marble, Marble Town, Town, which was, which was to have that catch all language to try to say we're am amending um, the code to include New York stretch. But where there is any type of conflict, not that provision, but not actually specifically identifying what the provision is. That that was the concern. And that's the same with the other two too. They just use different language, but effectively that's the problem. Yes, yeah. correct. Okay. I mean, from a local government standpoint, I can see what they were trying to do without having to go through and identify each individual conflict. But I, I see the problem. Thank you. But I guess so this is Robert. My question would be, it's basically giving them a pick and choose on a case by case basis by the person enforcing it. How would you know um, which job and who gets which code? whether it's the stretch or the uniform energy code, you know, the energy code. And that there lies a problem. I see Penny Ota shaking her head, yes. <laughs> yes, correct. Are there any other questions with regard to these? I think we 
probably should have taken them one at a time. But okay. Hearing none, we're gonna we'll, we'll we have to vote them one at a time. So we're gonna start with the town of Portland, and we'll I'll have Penny Oda read the motion. Go from there. Go ahead, Penny Oda. For your consideration, on July 20th, 2021, the town of Cortland, the town, adopted local law number one of 2021, which adopted New York Stretch Energy Code 2020, New York Stretch, and provided that any provision in New York Stretch which conflicts with any provision in the Conservation Construction Code of New York State 2020, ECCCNYS 2020, shall be severed from the town's adoption of New York Stretch. The local law was filed with the Department of State's State Records Unit pursuant to Municipal Home Rule Law on September 23, 2021. On September 30, 2021, more than 30 days after the adoption of Local Law Number 1 of 2021, the town filed a copy of Local Law Number 1 of 2021 with the Department of State for the Code Council's review pursuant to Subdivision 2 of Section 11-109. On July 10th, 2020 and September 16th, 2021, NYSERDA sort of presented to the Code Council a report indicating that New York Stretch Energy Code 2020 version 1.0, which modifies certain provisions of the 2018 International Energy Conservation Code and ASHRAE Standard 90.1-2016 is more restrictive than the currently effective version of the State Energy Code. New York Stretch is not intended to be utilized as a standalone publication, but as an overlay to the 2018 International Energy Conservation Code and ASHRAE Standard 90.1-2016. The Town of Cortland's Local Energy Conservation Construction Code, as amended by Local Law Number 1 of 2021, adopts New York Stretch, but then provides that any provision in the New York Stretch which conflicts with any provision in the Energy Conservation Construction Code of New York State 2020, ECC and NYS, shall be severed from the Town's adoption of New York Stretch. All of the provisions in New York Stretch modify and thereby conflict with provisions in the ECCC NYS 2020. Therefore, the provisions of the State Energy Code are applicable in the town. I move that the Code Council determine pursuant to Subdivision 2 of Section 11-109 of the Energy Law that the Town of Cortland's Local Energy Conservation Construction Code, as amended by Local Law Number 1 of 2021, is not more restrictive than the currently effective version of the State Energy Code. So moved. Okay, I make that motion. May I have a second? Ben Keller, second. All right, ben Keller seconds the motion. Is there any discussion? I think I saw Claudia raising her hand. Go ahead, Claudia. Just, just because you did mention there's a Cortland person on, I wonder if we could provide them an opportunity for comment if they wanted to. You do that, sure. Yep, so uh, I know Michael Cunningham, I believe is the attorney for the municipality. Um, and let me see if I can unmute them now. Michael, you should be unmuted. Hi, this is Michael. Hello, Michael. Uh, hi, thank you for having me on. Um, I, I've heard the discussion, and I think we'll probably work with uh, Pangiata and um, Chris about a new local law. I think our intention was exactly what Ms. Bramer said about um, we didn't want to get, have any conflicts and we didn't want to make it any more restrictive, but I understand that maybe um, some new language is needed. Okay, thank you, Michael. Claudia, good? Okay. Um, thank you. All right, any other questions? Okay. Hearing none, we'll move it to a vote. Kevin? Matt Tebow. I'll vote to deny. Ben Keller. Deny. Michael Weber. Deny. Vincent Rapaciulo. Deny. Keith Wen. Denied. Joseph DiStefano. Deny. Claudia Bramer. Deny. Joseph Toomey. Deny. Sean Hamlin. Deny. Timothy DeRusher. Vote to deny. Robert Hughes. Deny. William Tyne. Bill. Bill Tyne. Come back to him. Patrick Dolan. Denied. 
Dominic Marinelli. Deny. Back up, William Time. Deny. Thank you. Unanimous. All right. It's a unanimous vote to deny. Denial is equal yes vote on the motion. So that motion carries. And, and uh, Kevin, I'll, I'll ask staff to, obviously, Michael was on the phone. Mr. Cunningham was on the phone. But can you obviously send the decision and work with the town to get us to a yes vote hopefully next time? All right. Uh, next is Athens. So we jump to Athens. It's next. We've already had discussion. Is there any other discussion on Athens before I turn it over to Peniota? All right. Hearing none. Peniota, if you could read the motion, my proposed motion. Clear consideration. On July 28, 2021, the village of Athens, the village adopted local law number six of 2021, which adopted the New York Stretch Energy Code 2020 New York Stretch and provided that any provision in New York Stretch which conflicts with any provision in the Conservation Construction Code of New York State 2020, ECCCNYS 2020, shall be severed from the village's adoption of New York Stretch. The local law was filed with the Department of State State Records Unit pursuant to the Municipal Home Rule Law on September 3rd, 2021. On September 13th, 2021, more than 30 days after the adoption of local law number six of 2021, the village filed a copy of local law number six of 2020 with the Department of State for the Code Council's review pursuant to subdivision two of section 11-109 of the energy law. On July 10th, 2020 and September 16th, 2021, NYSERDA presented to the Code Council a report indicating that New York Stretch Energy Code 2020 version 1.0, which modifies certain provisions of the 2018 International Energy Conservation Code and ASHRAE Standard 90.1 2016, is more restrictive than the currently effective version of the State Energy Code. New York Stretch is not intended to be utilized as a standalone publication, but as an overlay to the 2018 International Energy Conservation Code and ASHRAE Standard 90.1 2016. The Village of Athens Local Energy Conservation Construction Code, as amended by Local Law Number 6 of 2021, adopts New York Stretch, but then provides that any provision in the New York Stretch which conflicts with any provision in the Conservation Construction Code of New York State 2020, ECCC NYS 2020, shall be severed from the village's adoption of New York Stretch. All of the provisions in New York Stretch modify and thereby conflict with provisions in ECCC NYS 2020. Therefore, the provisions of the State Energy Code are applicable in the village. I move that the Code Council determine, pursuant to Subdivision 2 of Section 11-109 of the Energy Law, that the Village of Athens Local Energy Conservation Construction Code, as amended by Local Law Number 6 of 2021, is not more restrictive than the currently effective version of the State Energy Code. So moved. Okay, thank you, Peniota. As, uh, as noted earlier, I make that motion. Can I have a second? Second. Bill Tyne. Bill Tyne seconds the motion. Is there any discussion on the motion? Okay, hearing none, Kevin, you please. Matt Tebow. I will vote to deny. Ben Kellard. Deny. Michael Weber. Deny. Vincent Rapajulo. Deny. Keith Wen. Deny. Joseph DiStefano. Deny. Claudia Bramer. I vote yes to deny. Joseph Toomey. Deny. Sean Hamlin. Deny. Timothy DeRusher. Oh, to deny. Robert Hughes. Deny. William Tyne. Deny. Patrick Dolan. Oh, to deny. Dominic Marinelli. Deny. Unanimous for denial. The motion unanimously carries to deny uh, the uh, approval. Therefore, <laughs> that one's out. Okay. Kevin, if you'll transmit to the village of Athens the decision of the council. And again, let's try and work with them as a staff to get to a yes next time. Okay. Town of Marble Town. Law 5 of 2021. Like I said, we've already, before we've already had discussion on this, but is there any other discussion before we move to a motion? All right, hearing none. Any Oda, if you'll please read the motion. 
for your consideration. On June 1st, 2021, the town of Marbletown, the town, adopted local law number four of 2021, which amended the town of Marbletown code, the town code, to adopt the New York Stretch Energy Code 2020, New York Stretch. Local law number four of 2021 was filed with the Department of State's Records Unit pursuant to municipal home rule law on June 17th, 2021. On June 28th, 2021, less than 30 days after the adoption of local law number four of 2021, the town filed a copy of local law number four of 2021 with the Department of State for the state through the Code Council's review pursuant to subdivision two of section 11-109 of the energy law. On September 21st, 2021, the town adopted local law number five of 2021 which amended the town code to repeal local law number four of 2021 and to adopt New York stretch with modifications. The local law was filed with the Department of State State Records Unit pursuant to municipal home rule law on October 13th, 2021. On October 14th, 2021, less than 30 days after the adoption of local law number five of 2021, the town filed a copy of local law number five of 2021 with the Department of State for the Code Council's review pursuant to subdivision two of section 11109 of the energy law. On July 10th, 2020 and September 16th, 2021, I sort of presented to the Code Council a report indicating that New York Stretch Energy Code 2020 version 1.0, which modifies certain provisions of the 2018 International Energy Conservation Code and ASHRAE Standard 90.1 2016, is more restrictive than the currently effective version of the State Energy Code. New York Stretch is not intended to be utilized as a standalone publication, but as an overlay to the 2018 International Energy Conservation Code and ASHRAE Standard 90.1 2016. The Town of Marbletown's Local Energy Conservation Construction Code, as amended by Local Law Number 5 of 2021, as written, adopts New York Stretch as a supplement to the State Energy Code, unless superseded by more restrictive or conflicting provisions adopted by the Town of Marbletown or New York State. And only Section R403.6.2 of New York Stretch is specifically identified as being severed from the Town's adoption of the local law. Without specifically identifying all provisions of the Town of Marbletown's Local Energy Conservation Construction Code, the Town cannot demonstrate that the Local Energy Conservation Construction Code is indeed more restrictive than the State Energy Code. I move that the Code Council determine, pursuant to Subdivision 2 of Section 11-109 of the Energy Law, that the Town of Marbletown's Local Energy Conservation Construction Code, as amended by Local Law Number 5 of 2021, is not more restrictive than the currently effective version of the State Energy Code. So moved. Thank you, Paniota. I make that motion. May I have a second? Joe Toomey seconds. Joe Toomey seconds the motion. Is there any discussion on the motion? Seeing and hearing none. Kevin, if you'll please call the roll. Matt Tebow. I'll vote yes on the motion to deny. Ben <coughs> Keller. I'll vote to deny. Michael Weber. Deny. Vincent Rapachulo. Yes, to deny. Keith Wen. Deny. Joseph DiStefano. Deny. Claudia Kramer. Yes, to deny. Joseph Toomey. Deny. Sean Hamlin. Deny. Timothy DeRuger. Oh, yes, to deny. Robert Hughes. Denied. William Tyne. Denied. Patrick Dolan. They vote to deny. Dominic Marinelli. Deny. Unanimous for denial. You, the motion unanimously carries to deny. Okay. That moves us on. Out of Geneva? Geneva, correct. Okay. Yes, both the town of Geneva and the village of Irvington adopted New York Stretch as a supplement to the state energy code without any modifications and submitted the filing within 30 days of adoption. The council has previously found, relying on presentations to the council made by NYSERDA at the meetings of July 2020 and September of 2021, that adopting New York stretch without modifications results in a local law that is more restrictive than the state energy code. I remind you that the presentations made by NYSERDA were specific to version one of the 2020 New York stretch. In the case of the town of Geneva, local 
the, the local law, and as it pertains to the adoption of the New York stretch, includes this language, unquote, as currently in effect and as hereafter amended from time to time. The language of the local law for the village of Irvington also appears to imply that the village adopted not only the current version of New York stretch, but also any subsequent amendments thereto. Should a municipality wish to enforce any future amendments to New York stretch, the local energy code would be required to be amended and the municipality would be required to file such amendment with the code council pursuant to energy law section 11-109. For both of these instances, for the town of Geneva and the village of Urbanton, the division recommends that the code council acts as follows. One, find that the adopted local energy code is more restrictive than the state energy code based on your previous action and on my service presentations. Secondly, find that it was filed within 30 days and it is therefore enforceable. However, the division does not recommend that you make any findings regarding future versions of a standard that has not yet been published and instead memorialize in a motion the specific version of New York stretch that these two findings are based on. Okay, thank you, Emma. Yes, these are complicated. Uh, are there any questions for Emma? Okay, hearing none, looking up at the screen, I, I know I am very happy that we now have a, have a model local law that hopefully municipalities are starting to work from. Okay, uh, where am I? I'm on motion. So, Feniota, if you could read the motion for the town of Geneva first, please. For your consideration, on September 14th, 2021, the town of Geneva, the town, adopted local law number three of 2021, which amended chapter 63 of the town of Geneva code, the town code, by amending the definition of energy code to replace the state energy conservation construction code, the state energy code, with New York Stretch Energy Code 2020, developed and published by NYSERDA. On September 30th, 2021, less than 30 days after the adoption of local law number three of 2021, the town filed a copy of local law number three of 2021 with the Department of State for the co-council's review, pursuant to subdivision two of section 11-109 of the energy law. On November 9th, 2021, the town adopted local law number seven of 2021, which amended chapter 63 of the town code by amending the definition of energy code to mean the 2020 energy conservation construction code of New York state as supplemented by New York stretch published by NYSERDA. On November 17th, 2021, less than 30 days after the adoption of local law number seven of 2021, the town filed a copy of local law number seven of 2021 with the Department of State for the Code Council's review pursuant to subdivision two of section 11-109 of the energy law. Local law number seven of 2021 was not filed with the Department of State's State Records Unit pursuant to the municipal home rule law. On July 10th, 2020 and September 16th, 2021, NYSERDA presented to the Code Council a report indicating that New York Stretch Energy Code 2020 version 1.0 which modifies certain versions of the 2018 International Energy Conservation Code and ASHRAE Standard 90.1 2016 is more restrictive than the currently effective version of the State Energy Code. New York Stretch is not intended to be utilized as a standalone publication, but as an overlay to the 2018 International Energy Conservation Code and ASHRAE Standard 90.1 2016. The Town of Geneva's Local Energy Conservation Construction Code, as amended by Local Law Number 7 of 2021, amends the definition of energy code to mean the 2020 Energy Conservation Construction Code of New York State as supplemented by New York Stretch, published by NYSERDA as currently in effect and as hereafter amended from time to time. I move that the Code Council determine, pursuant to Subdivision 2 of Section 11-109 of the Energy Law, that the Town of Geneva's Local Energy Conservation Construction Code, as amended by Local Law Number 7 of 2021, 
is more restrictive than the currently effective version of the state energy code. This determination is limited to version 1.0 of New York stretch and the code council makes no finding or determination regarding any subsequent amendments to New York stretch. In the event that the town of Geneva would like to amend the town's local energy code to include future amendments to New York stretch, then such amendments would need to be filed with the code council in accordance with subdivision two of section 11 109 of the energy law. The Cone Council makes no finding or determination regarding any provision in the town of Geneva's local energy code that may be a local standard for construction within the meaning of section 379 of the executive law and nothing herein should be construed as the Code Council's approval or adoption of any such local standard for construction. In addition, the town's local law shall not be effective until the local law is filed with the state records unit pursuant to the municipal home rule law. So moved. Thank you, Penny Oda, for taking care of that last part for me. <laughs> uh, is there a second to that motion that I'm making? Sean Hamlin, second. Sean Hamlin seconds the motion. Is there any discussion on the motion? Okay, hearing none, Kevin. Matt Tebow. I vote yes. Ben Keller. Yes. Michael Weber. Yes. yes. Vincent Rapachulo. Yes. Keith Wen. Yes. Joseph DiStefano. Yes. Claudia Bramer. Yes. Joseph Toomey. Yes. Sean Hamlin. Yes. Timothy DeRusher. Yes. Robert Hughes. Yes. William Tyne. Yes. Patrick Dolan. I vote, I vote yes. Dominic Marinelli. Yes. Unanimous for yes. Motion carries unanimously. Now we have the village of Irvington, local law number four. That was previously discussed before we can move to a motion. Are there any, is there any further discussion on Irvington? Questions? Hearing none. Peniota, if you could read the motion for the village of Irvington. For your consideration, on September 20th, 2021, the village of Irvington, the village adopted local law number four of 2021, which amended the village of Irvington code, the village code, to adopt the New York Stretch Energy Code 2020, New York Stretch. The local law was filed with the Department of State State Records Unit pursuant to municipal home rule law on September 28th, 2021. On October 19th, 2021, less than 30 days after the adoption of local law number four of 2021, the village filed a copy of local law number four of 2021 with the Department of State for the Code Council's review pursuant to subdivision two of section 11-109 of the energy law. On July 10th, 2020 and September 16th, 2021, they sort of presented to the Code Council a report indicating that New York Stretch Energy Code 2020 version 1.0, which modifies certain provisions of the 2018 International Energy Cons Conservation Code and ASHRAE Standard 90.1 2016, is more restrictive than the currently effective version of the State Energy Code. The Village of Irvington's Local Energy Conservation Construction Code, as amended by Local Law Number 4 of 2021, adopts New York Stretch by providing that the New York Stretch Energy Code 2020, published by NYSERDA, shall be applicable to all new construction, substantial renovations, alterations, and additions as required by the Energy Code. I move that the Code Council determine pursuant to Subdivision 2 of Section 11-109 of the Energy Law that the Village of Irvington's Local Energy Conservation Construction Code, as amended by Local Law Number 4 of 2021, is more restrictive than the currently effective version of the State Energy Code. This determination is limited to version 1.0 of New York Stretch, and the Code Council makes no finding or determination regarding any subsequent amendments to New York Stretch. In the event that the Village of Irvington would like to amend the Village's Local Energy Code to include future amendments to New York Stretch, then such amendments would need to be filed with the Code Council in accordance with Subdivision 2 of Section 11-109 of the Energy Law. The Code Council makes no finding or determination regarding any provision in the Village of Irvington's Local Energy Code that may be a local standard for construction within the meaning of Section 379 of the Executive Law, and nothing herein should be construed as the Code Council's approval or adoption of any such local standard for construction. So moved. Thank you, Peniota. As noted earlier, I make that motion. May I have a second for that motion? Bill Tyne second. Bill Tyne seconds the motion. Is there any discussion on the motion? OK, 
Okay. Hearing none. Kevin, let's call a roll. Matt Tebow. I vote yes. Ben Keller. Yes. Michael Weber. Yes. Vincent Rapachulo. Yes. Keith Wen. Yes. Joseph DiStefano. Yes. Claudia Bramer. Yes. Joseph Toomey. Yes. Sean Hamlin. Yes. Timothy DeRusher. I vote yes. Robert Hughes. Yes. William Tyne. Yes. Patrick Dolan. I vote yes. Dominic Marinelli. Yes. Motion carries unanimously. Okay, hang with me folks, seven down, three to go. Emma, next one. Thank you. The village of Philmont and the town of Niskayuna also adopted New York Stretch without modifications. As previously mentioned, the council has found similar adoptions to be more restrictive than the state energy code. However, because both of these municipalities filed the local law with the Department of State more than 30 days after adoption, they may not enforce such local law until and unless the code council shall find that such local law, law is more restrictive than the state energy code. Therefore, the division recommends that the council find that both of these local energy codes are more restrictive than the state energy code so that the municipalities may properly enforce these local laws in accordance with subdivision so two of section 11-109 of the energy law. Okay, thank you. Any questions with regard to these two? I will note that uh, Somebody from the town of Niskiona is here. Should somebody have any questions specifically for the municipality? Thank you, Kevin. All right. Hearing no questions, back to Peniota, who I hope is having her tea and honey at this point. Go ahead, Peniota. The village of Philmont. Yes, please. For your consideration, on August 9th, 2021, the village of Philmont, the village adopted local law number one of 2021, which amended the village of Philmont code, the village code, to adopt New York Stretch Energy Code 2020. The local law was filed with the Department of State State's Records Unit pursuant to municipal home rule law on August 19th, 2021. On September 10th, 2021, more than 30 days after the adoption of local law number one of 2021, the village filed a copy of local law number one of 2021 with the Department of State for the Code Council's review pursuant to subdivision two of section 11-109 of the energy law. On July 10th, 2020 and September 16th, 2021, NYSERDA presented to the Code Council report indicating that New York Stretch Energy Code 2020 version 1.0, which modifies certain provisions of the 2018 International Energy Conservation Code and ASHRAE Standard 90.1-2016, is more restrictive than the currently effective version of the State Energy Code. The Village of Philmont's Local Energy Conservation Construction Code, as amended by Local Law Number 1 of 2021, adopts New York Stretch by providing that the New York Stretch Energy Code 2020, published by NYSERDA, shall be applicable to all new construction, substantial renovations, alterations, and additions, as required by the 2020 ECCC NYS, as amended by New York Stretch. I move that the Code Council determine, pursuant to Subdivision 2 of Section 11-109 of the Energy Law, that the Village of Philmont's Local Energy Conservation Construction Code, as amended by Local Law Number 1 of 2021, is more restrictive than the currently effective version of the State Energy Code. This determination is limited to version 1.0 of New York Stretch, and the Code Council makes no finding or determination regarding any subsequent amendments to New York Stretch. The Code Council makes no finding or determination regarding any provision in the Village of Philmont's Local Energy Code that may be a local standard for construction within the meaning of Section 379 of the Executive Law, and nothing herein shall be construed as the Code Council's approval or adoption of any such local standard for construction. So moved. Okay, as noted previously, I make that motion. Do I have a second, please? Joe no, Tomey seconds. Thank you, Joe. Joe Tomey seconds the motion. Is there any discussion on the motion? Hearing none. Kevin, if you wouldn't mind calling the roll. Matt Tebow. I vote yes. 
Ben Keller. Yes. Michael Weber. Yes. Vincent Rapachulo. Yes. Keith Wen. Yes. Joseph DiStefano. Yes. Claudia Bramer. Yes. Joseph Toomey. Yes. Sean Hamlin. Yes. Timothy DeRusher. Yes. Robert Hughes. Yes. William Tyne. Yes. Patrick Dolan. Yes. Dominic Marinelli. Yes. Motion carries unanimously. Kevin, if you'll please transmit to the village of Philmont that they may now enforce their, their more restrictive local energy standard. Okay, that brings us to the village of Philmont, which was previously discussed. Town of Niskayuna. Oh, I'm sorry, town of Miskiunish. Sorry, I looked in the wrong spot. The town of Niskayuna, which was previously discussed. Are there, is there any further discussion before we move to the motion? Hearing none, Aniota, can you please read the motion for the town of Niskayuna? Apologize again. For your consideration, on April 27th, 2021, the town of Niskayuna, the town, adopted local law number three of 2021, which amended the town of Niskayuna code, the town code, to adopt New York Stretch Energy Code 2020, New York Stretch. The local law was filed at the Department of State State Records Unit pursuant to Municipal Home Rule Law on May 4th, 2021. On October 28th, 2021, more than 30 days after the adoption of Local Law Number 3 of 2021, the town filed a copy of Local Law Number 3 of 2021 with the Department of State for the Code Council's review pursuant to Subdivision 2 of Section 11-109 of the Energy Law. On July 10th, 2020 and September 16th, 2021, NYSERDA presented to the Code Council a report indicating that New York stretch which modifies certain provisions of the 2018 International Energy Conservation Code and ASHRAE Standard 90.1-2016 is more restrictive than the currently effective version of the State Energy Code. The Town of Niskayuna's Local Energy Conservation Construction Code, as amended by Local Law Number 3 of 2021, adopts New York Stretch by providing that the New York Stretch Energy Code 2020, published by NYSERDA, shall be applicable to all new construction, substantial renovations, alterations, and additions, as required by the 2020 ECC CNYS, as amended by New York Stretch. I move that the Code Council determine, pursuant to Subdivision 2 of Section 11-109 of the Energy Law, that the town of Niskayuna's local energy conservation construction code as amended by local law number three of 2021 is more restrictive than the currently effective version of the state energy code. This determination is limited to version 1.0 of New York stretch and the code council makes no finding or determination regarding any subsequent amendments to New York stretch. The code council makes no finding or determination regarding any provision in the town of Niskayuna's local energy code that may be a local standard for construction within the meaning of section 379 of the executive law and nothing herein shall be construed as the code council's approval or adoption of any such local standard for construction. So moved. Thank you, Penny Oda. As noted previously, I make that motion. May I have a second? Second. That was Michael Weber. It sounded like Michael Weber makes a second there. Okay, is there any discussion on the motion? None. Kevin, run the roll for me, please. Matt Tebow. I vote yes. Ben Keller. Yes. Michael Weber. Yes. Vincent Rapachulo. Yes. Keith Wen. Yes. Joseph DiStefano. Yes. Claudia Bramer. Yes. Joseph Toomey. Yes. Sean Hamlin. Yes. Timothy DeRusher. Yes. Robert Hughes. Yes. William Tyne. Yes. Patrick Dolan. Yes. Dominic Marinelli. Yes. Motion carries unanimously. Kevin, again, we please transmit uh, to the town of Niskayuna that they may now enforce their more restrictive local energy standards. Okay, that brings us to our last one, City of Canandaigua. Emma. 
The city of Canandaigua adopted a local law that appears to indicate that they've adopted New York Stretch as a replacement of the state energy code rather than the supplement that it is intended to be. Consistent with the council's previous findings for a similar adoption at the September 16, 2021 meeting, the division recommends that the council find that the local energy code adopted by the city of Canandaigua is not more restrictive than the state energy code. Thank you, Emma. Any questions for Emma? Okay, hearing none. Maniota, one more time. For your consideration, on September 2nd, 2021, the city of Canandaigua, the city, adopted local law number three of 2021, which amended chapter 714 of the city of Canandaigua code, the city code, by amending the definition of energy code to replace the state energy conservation construction code, the state energy code, with New York Stretch Energy Code 2020, New York Stretch developed by NYSERDA. The local law was filed with the Department of State State Records Unit pursuant to municipal home rule law on September 13th, 2021. On September 23rd, 2021, less than 30 days after the adoption of local law number three of 2021, the city filed a copy of local law number three of 2021 with the Department of State for the Code Council's review pursuant to subdivision two of section 11-109 of the energy law. On July 10th, 2020 and September 16th, 2021, they sort of presented to the Code Council a report indicating that New York Stretch Energy Code 2020 version 1.0, which modifies certain provisions of the 2018 International Energy Conservation Code and ASHRAE Standard 90.1-2016, is more restrictive than the currently effective version of the State Energy Code. New York Stretch is not intended to be utilized as a standalone publication, but as an overlay to the 2018 International Energy Conservation Code and ASHRAE Standard 90.1-2016. The City of Canandaigua's Local Energy Conservation Construction Code, as amended by Local Law Number 3 of 2021, as written, does not appear to adopt New York Stretch as an overlay, but replaces the State Energy Code with New York Stretch, and therefore does not provide the same level of energy efficiency in all circumstances as provided in the State Energy Code. I move that the Code Council determine, pursuant to Subdivision 2 of Section 11-109 of the Energy Law, that the city of Canandaigua's local energy conservation construction code as amended by local law number three of 2021 is not more restrictive than the currently effective version of the state energy code. So moved. Thank you, Peniota. Again, I make that motion. So may I have a second? Bill Tyne second. Bill Tyne seconds the motion. Is there any discussion on the motion? Hearing none, go to the vote, Kevin. Matt Tebow. I vote yes to deny. Ben Keller. Deny. Michael Weber. Deny. Vincent Rapachulo. Yes to deny. Keith Wen. Denied. Joseph DeStefano. Deny. Claudia Bramer. Yes to deny. Joseph Toomey. Deny. Sean Hamlin. Deny. Timothy DeRoucher. Yes to deny. Robert Hughes. Deny. William Tyne. Yes to deny. Patrick Dolan. Vote to deny. Dominic Marinelli. Deny. Motion carries unanimously. The determination is to deny. Kevin, if you'll please transmit that finding to the city, and I'm gonna ask Emma and her team to work with the city so we can get them to where they need to be. Okay, um, I'll do some quick thank yous there. Thank you, Peniota. I know that was a lot of speaking. Thank you, Emma. I know this has been a ton of work, Kevin, you too, over the last couple of months to get through all those uh, very some very complicated uh, situations. And thank you to the council for bearing with us and, and getting through those. I know that was a bit of a slog. I think we're done with voting for today. We can now get through the rest of the agenda. Uh, agenda item four, other more restrictive local standards and energy code filings. Uh, Kevin's now gonna do a lot of talking just to update us on uh, other filings that we have in house uh, and where they stand.
right? Kevin, it's you, right? Yes, it is. Thanks, Matt. All right. So there are several other municipalities that have submitted a notice and petition pursuant to Executive Law Section 379 and or filings pursuant to Energy Law Section 11-109, but for various reasons are not ready to be formally presented to the co-council at this time. The city and town of Ithaca have adopted a local green code and submitted a filing pursuant to Energy Law Section 11-109. The division has received some supplemental information on November 16th following the initial submission and staff is reviewing that information so we can make a recommendation to the code council. Therefore, no recommendation is available at this time. As noted at the previous code council meeting, the city of Kingston submitted both a notice and petition pursuant to executive law section 379 and a filing pursuant to energy law section 11-109 for the city's adoption of New York strategy. At the time of submission, the city requested their local not law not be presented to the code council until the city is able to provide some supplemental information. To date, the division has not received any additional information. The division has reached out to the city on several occasions through voicemails and emails with no additional responses from the city. Therefore, no action is recommended at this time. The Town of Bethel submitted both a notice of petition pursuant to Executive Law Section 379 and a filing pursuant to Energy Law Section 11-109 for the Town's adoption of New York Stretch. Since the last Code Council meeting, the Town of Bethel has indicated that they, after consulting with NYSERDA, the town is going to be enacting a local law rescinding the portion of New York stretch that would require the notice of petition. They anticipate the local law being enacted sometime in December. Following that, the town plans to ask to withdraw their notice of petition and submit a new filing for the modified local law. Therefore, no action is recommended. The town of North Salem submitted a filing pursuant to energy law section 11-109 for their adoption of New York stretch. However, the town has since repealed the local law and subsequently has withdrawn their filing. The town is working on updating the language of their local law and intends to file again once the new local law is adopted. So therefore, again, no action is recommended. The town of East Hampton submitted a filing pursuant to energy law section 11-109 for their adoption of New York stretch on November 30, 30 day, within 30 days of their adoption. Division staff needs additional time to review the local law to make any recommendations to the code council. And lastly, the village of Elmsford submitted a notice and petition pursuant to executive law section 379 for a local law with more restrictive construction provisions. Division staff is working to perform a detailed review of the local law and the construction provisions in order to produce a staff analysis and recommendation to the code council. Great. Thank you, Kevin. Are there any questions on any of those at this time? All right, hearing none, we're starting to cruise along now. Uh, we move to agenda item number five. And we'll hear from Mr. Dario about the uh, comings and goings of the division in his director update. John. Thank please. you, Chair Tebow, uh, co-council members. Um, I just have a few things to update the co-council on. The first one is, um, I don't know if you've noticed, but there's a, there's a, a bigger focus on energy um, at all levels. <laughs> So I'm pleased to announce that we actually have created an energy code services unit and Emma has been promoted to assistant director for that unit. So um, congratulations, Emma. Um, and Emma is joined by Gregory Benton, um, who's an engineer and has a good background on, on, in electrical and mechanical systems. So um, that's a great thing. The, the intent is they, they would take some of the functions of uh, technical support and training eventually once we get uh, some additional staff. So um, again, thank, thanks to Emma and, and all the work she's done uh, on that. So um, training, uh, as I mentioned before, uh, at the last meeting, we are no longer providing CEO uh, BSI credit for attending the co-council meeting. Uh, so. There were there were several reasons for that and we you know a lot of times it didn't kind of fall into the, the topic areas and we weren't sure you know the length of the meeting so we we no longer provide that um, we also as far as continuing educations for, for code enforcement and bsis um that is set for next year we have su had such a, a a success with the online webinars uh we will continue that uh, at some of the events I, I mentioned before, we had from 1,500 to 2,000 people attend one class. So um, we will be continuing that. 
um, and I th believe we have about 24 hour schedule for next year, at least. And then um, we also have about 24 hours of on demand training in SLIMS. And between third party online training and DOS, there's about 50 hours of online training. Um, and again, I'll just say that code officials need 24 hours annually uh, of in service, or we call you know continuing education training. So um, that's uh, uh, so they should be able to be able to get that online. There's still conferences. There's a lot of value to go into the in-person training, and we, and we know that. So um, anyway, so there's a lot of available training to code enforcement officials. Uh, update on part 1203. We are finalizing the rule do rulemaking documents. Uh, again, hopefully that will be, you know, somewhat soon filed, and that will be a notice of adoption. Again, the notice of adoption will will it's anticipated that will that will be effective like at least a year uh, from the from the filing date, and it also that will allow us to do some training and outreach for local governments. Local governments will need to update their local laws in response to that. We also will have a model local law available on our website to help uh, local governments with that. So regarding the 2021 code review, staff is, is still reviewing that. We're hoping that we'll have some sort of summary for the code council at the next the March meeting. Um, in the past, we've had a, had a list of what the changes are and, and you know, just kind of a summary of, of what the what the uh, the changes are. So we will we will try to do that and have that ready for the March meeting. Sorry, my lights just went out. Um, I guess I'm not moving. Uh, uh, so we talked a little bit about the uh, Climate Action Council. They are still working on the scoping plan. So I know that there has to be something done by by next year. Um, so and still, there's nothing that I'm aware of that has changed that would affect the building sector. But I I think they're they're looking at all sectors of that, and that will be in the, in the final scoping plan. As far as new legislation, I'm not. I know council is working on providing a summary of legislative changes. There's nothing that that requires the code council to do anything at this point. Um, but there's some things that the code council should be aware of. Um, some of those are, is, you know, as far as remedies and, and fines, um, there's also one out there that was signed by the governor. Doesn't go into effect until September 1st, 2022, but it requires home builders to provide uh, estimates for the cost of installing a sprinkler system. And, uh, one in, one in two family dwellings. Uh, and again, that doesn't go into effect till, till next year, September 1st, 2022. Um, just to uh, update you on the code change proposals, the group A proposals, I believe the final consensus vote was this week. Um, so those are, will be finalized by the, by the end of the year assuming that there's no appeals. Uh, we had, the Coast Division had about 14 code changes that were approved in the Group A. So that's actually, uh, you know, staff did an amazing job. We went we went to the, the hearings in Pittsburgh. Uh, I tried to stay out of their way. They, they, you know, did an excellent job. So I think the 21 years that I've been at the Department of State, that's probably the, the best we've done. Um, so I'm, I'm really proud of, of everybody that went out there and, and, you know, spoke on the proposal. So uh, other thing, the next cycle, the group B is actually the hearings are going to be in Rochester in at the end of March. I think it starts March 27th. So I would just encourage if, if you've never been to the hearings, it I think it's open to to everyone. You can anybody can go in just even if you want to just go for an hour. I would encourage you just to just to go out there and just see how the hearings are are you know held and 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 you know how you know the procedures it's 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 interesting so um i would say probably an hour would probably be uh, enough but you could spend the whole day there so 
and I don't, Dottie, is there, is there anything, and I'm gonna go, I'm gonna refer to Dottie here, but Dottie uh, Mozzarella, I'm sorry. Um, so Dottie, is there anything as far as the hearings that, that you could add or, or they're, they're March 27th through the through yes. April? March okay. 27th um, until April 6th, and it's um, the building code structural existing building code, chapter one of the green construction code, all the administrative chapters, um, the residential code, building portions. And so those are the codes that at least will be um, debated. Okay, thank you. Yeah, that, that's all I have. Thank you, John. Uh, before I turn it over for any questions, I'm just going to actually take a moment myself to congratulate Emma. We're so happy to have you in this role. Uh, I think it's going to be a very important role, I, I think, as we kind of all saw today uh, over the next few years. So great, great decision, John, and thank you uh, for accepting. Uh, also, I, I just want to highlight something John said in there. Uh, obviously, we are now really beginning uh, the code update process, which will likely take us uh, three years and, and will be a pretty intensive process, especially since we're also doing all of this energy stops. So that's another reason for this sort of bifurcation so that we can concentrate on more than uh, one core mission at the same time. Uh, okay, are there any questions for John before we move on? Yeah, I have a question, Pat Dolan. Sure, Pat. Go ahead. I'm sorry, I lost you. Okay, can you hear me? Yep. Go ahead, Pat. Yeah, John. Just a question: Has uh, much discussion regarding hydrogen and even green hydrogen has that been discussed through the state, as far as a clean energy source? It has been discussed with the with the climate action. I know there was some discussions with that. Um, I don't I don't know what the final the final recommendations or, or what will be included in the scoping plan, but it has been it has been discussed. I don't I just don't you know at what level and what what the what the recommendations are. I don't know um, to be honest. I think I think it will that may will come out in the final scoping plan for the climate action, but um, I don't know if there's anything in in the uh, I code that that. You know, address that, but that's something I could look into if, if you want. Um, yeah, I just, uh, I mean, your own opinion on it. Do, do you, are you a, f a fan of uh, re regarding hydrogen? Um, I guess, uh, yeah, I mean, it, 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 it's, I guess, yeah, I don't, I don't, um, you know, fan. I, I don't. Well, I shouldn't say fan. I mean, the, your your opinion on it. Uh, to me, it's a, you know, it's a uh, energy which is clean, which is natural gas or even nuclear power, but also renewable power such as the uh, solar and wind to be used to produce hydrogen. Right. Right. Yeah. I mean, it's a, it's a good alternative. I I don't. You know. Um, Yeah, I guess we, you know, with the code, I know the code does address certain certain aspects of it, um, but yeah, I don't, I don't know. That would be something that probably would come out of the uh, the climate action council scoping plan and, and recommendations. Okay. John, do you want to yeah, John, do you want to defer there until until the climate action council has had more discussions on that topic? Yes. Okay. Any other questions? That others? Okay. Hearing none, we'll move on to agenda item number six, which is the work group update. And we're back to Kevin to we now have two work groups. So Kevin. Thanks, Matt. So looking at the two work groups, first the initial work group, which was looking at those uh, 13 items and has been meeting periodically over the last uh, probably close to two years now. Uh, we, we've conducted our final meetings and we've taken in our final comments. Um, we're working on just making the final adjustments and tweaks to the document. And once that's complete, we'll be able to distribute to the remaining 
co-council members. So I'll take a moment to thank you all, all the members of that work group who put in a lot of time and effort to, to work on that document. And we're, we're almost to the finish line. So that's great. Yep. I, I, I also want to thank the members and I'll apologize. It's, you know, this last couple of weeks is, is because of the holidays. It's been a little, a little rough, but we're going to get that out uh, pretty quickly. And, uh, you know, for discussion at the, uh, at the March meeting and, and, uh, and potentially action into the next code update. So, uh, Kevin, second one. So the next work group that we have is, uh, we've termed it the building assessment work group. Uh, we had a first meeting conducted on November 16th where we redistributed the letters and the documents associated with the establishment of the group. And we discussed the schedule, including the upcoming ICC meetings. The next meeting for the ICC panel discussion is on uh, December 7th, and the work group has then scheduled a meeting to review the details and the outcomes of that meeting on December 14th. Uh, so with that, I'll pass it to John to see if there's anything else you wanted to add. Uh, John? No, I think you covered that. That's good. I, I will ask, um, Scotty, is there, with that meeting on the 7th, is, is there anything you want to add to that as far as the, the meeting itself? Um, well, I think most important is that we've invited um, Director John Adario to be one of our speakers. Um, this was a result of the um, August 17th meeting that we had in West Palm Beach, which John was also in attendance. And there were many states that did want to participate, as well as some international countries that could not fly, of course, or just um, you know, be in attendance. So we promised to have a virtual meeting so that other states could participate, other countries could participate, listen in, ask questions. Um, and so we have also been working on a document, um, which it's now being referred to as a protocol, um, but it's meant to be um, an extra, something additional to the International Property Maintenance Code that jurisdictions could use um, if they would like to do something more when it comes to recertification of buildings or some kind of a checklist, just something additional. And we will have an updated draft of that. Um, probably our hope was in advance of the meeting. I think it's probably going to be right after the meeting that we will circulate. So we'll make sure that you have that so you can circulate it to the work group as well as the members of the council. Um, and uh, just also, I, I know it's probably of interest of, of what is happening in Florida. I did participate just yesterday in Mayor Cava's um, task force that she's been holding. We've been a member of that and um, or we've been kind of an, uh, a resource to that to that committee. Um, and I spent some time in Tallahassee and what we're seeing in the form of introductions of legislation are dealing more with the condo associations and um, how they share information are they doing proper reserving so that they can actually do some of the um, suggested modifications and, and building rehabilitation that's needed. So it tends to be more focused on the buildings themselves um, or on the condo associations themselves versus, um, you know, changes to the code. They have uh, what you have very similar. It's called the Florida Building Commission that serves as the body, which is also meeting. So I'll make sure to continue to um, keep the director up to date and, and hopefully we'll have some more follow-up after the meeting on the 7th, but I'm very happy that New York will be at the table participating. So thank you. Thank you, Daddy. Thanks, Tom. Okay, so I think I just want to summarize uh, where we are because I know there is a lot of interest in this, uh, it, one in the Senate and, and I'm reportedly told downstate uh, among constituencies. So we have a New York state uh, building assessment work group that we formed, this council formed uh, back in June, June meeting, right? Correct? No, it was actually September. September meeting, right, because this happened the day before our June meeting, right? Okay, so we, we formed that, it met for the first time, had preliminary discussions, and uh, it is scoping. Uh, we also now have, or we have the ICC uh, task force uh, that it has met uh, once in August and is now meeting again next week. They are, I'm happy to hear, coming up with a potential uh, protocol that uh, our task force can look at. Uh, as far as I understand it, and, and somebody correct me if I'm wrong, we are still waiting for the federal investigatory report. Is that correct? We are. Dottie's shaking her head. So, so we're still waiting for that. Uh, and and. From what I've heard, 
most experts are saying that you know, states should sort of wait until that comes out so that we are you know, pretty sure we know what we're dealing with here, why this, this condo building collapsed before we rush to, to action. Okay, uh, am I missing anything? Kevin, Dottie, uh, John, have I summarized that correctly? Dottie shaking her head yes, I love that. John shaking his head yes, okay. Yes. And Kevin is yeah, there with, here with me, so I can, I can feel him saying yes. Okay, good. All right, are there any, are there any questions uh, for either Dottie, Kevin, or John? Hearing none, well, I think we'll probably have more on that. Uh, almost sure we'll have more on that at the March meeting. Okay, uh, that moves us to agenda item number seven, public comment period. I know there were a few people on the list. I, I don't know if they stuck with us through our, our, our long day so far, but Kevin, I'll let you call on them. I'm going to ask them to keep their comments to three to five minutes, if at all possible. Because, uh, you know, we want to, we want to, we got quite a few on the list, at least we did. And I'll apologize in advance if I uh, mess up anyone's name. That's why I let you do it. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, the first person that had signed up was Alan Belt Belton or Beltoon. Uh, so I'm going to unmute you now if you would like to make your comment. I was going to make a comment, and I wanted to wait uh, specifically to listen to what the conversation was going to be about the structural inspection and maintenance um, report. But it may seem more appropriate to wait until the uh, Fed um, report comes out. I did have a chance, and I hope you all have had a chance to read the Florida Building Professionals recommendations. That report's available and on Surfside. It's somewhat generic, but they covered a few good things. And for those, I, I should have introduced myself. I'm a registered architect in the state of New York. I'm a director for the International Masonry Institute. And we are part of the um, International Union of Bricklayers and Allied Craft Workers. My interest really has much to do with worker safety, um, talking about training, other kinds of things that we would be able to give you input on. And we would like to see show up, obviously, in the report um, and talk about what kinds of buildings and things like that. We think we can be a valuable resource. So that's my um my interest in this um I, I think at that point i'll leave it alone and i'll join you for the next meeting and i have further comments um as far as that goes so thank you very much i'm glad you didn't put me on video as well i'll leave my comments as they are thank you all very much it was a very interesting to listen to all of this thank you sir kevin next we have William Nagel. And so, William, I'm going to unmute you now. Hi, I'm, uh, my name is William Nagel. I'm, I'm the political director for the Bricklayers and Allied Craft Workers uh, Unions in New York State. Um, I just wanted to, uh, again, like echo what Alan uh, had explained, that the, um, uh, you know, we are concerned about worker safety in these instances, particularly because a lot of the work that would be involved would probably involve work at a height on scaffolding, pipe scaffolding, um, uh, suspended scaffolding. New York City has a very, you know, as you, I'm sure you're all aware, has a very developed regulatory system around that kind of work because of the danger involved in it. And uh, we think that there's going to be a real connection between a maintenance program that would, you know, ultimately uh, require building owners to do a lot of that work in the entire state now. Um, so uh, that's what we're keeping an eye on, and uh, I, I appreciate it, your, uh, your meeting today and the comments that were made. Um, I hope uh, we'll check in again in March, but if, there's any, if we can be of a resource in the meantime regarding any of those issues, please don't hesitate to contact us. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Nagel. We will be in touch if, we, uh, if, if you can be of assistance. Appreciate it. And lastly, we have Thomas Parsons. Let me just find you on the list. There we are. All right. I'm going to unmute you now. Hey, Tom. Good morning, Mr. Chair. Thank you for uh, allowing me to speak today. 
Um, I'll try to keep my uh, comments brief. Um, the topic I'd like to talk about is uh, regarding uh, fabricator approval. Um, that's, a, 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 that's included as part of uh, Chapter 17 of the Building Code under Special Inspections. And um, this, as, as uh, Mr. Chairman, you know, and for the rest of the board, I am a chairman of the Syracuse Board of Review. Uh, we recently received a case um, from a jurisdiction in uh, northern New York, a uh, small jurisdiction, and involved a, uh, a, a small box retail uh, uh, building that was constructed. And uh, as many of you know, many components of these buildings are fabricated outside of New York State. And, uh, and uh, the, the challenge for code enforcement officials is the in special inspection requirements of fabricated items. And within the code, there is a section under 1704.2.5.1 called fabricator approval. An experienced uh, uh, code enforcement official who uh, may have uh, the skill sets to understand there are accreditation services, including IAS, uh, the International Accreditation Service, that is uh, a subset of the, uh, the International Codes Council that does uh, uh, fabricator approvals and accreditations. Um, but uh, the language in the code doesn't really um, direct a code enforcement official who may not be have the skill sets or may not be knowledgeable enough of these accreditation services. As with manufactured housing, I think it would be useful for the Department of State to have uh, a subset of, uh, of the staff or a group to actually do fabricator approval or at least acknowledge the accreditation services that are out there that approve fabricators of these uh, uh, manufactured structural members that go into these uh, typically small box uh, retail stores, but they also are used in big box stores. Again, this, uh, these materials are fabricated, particularly steel and uh, and inspections of welds and things like that happen at these facilities. It's very difficult for a code enforcement official to actually require uh, a, 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 a contractor to inspect welds and provide certifications when the material comes all primed and ready for installation on the site. So uh, dealing with this particular case, I thought it was important to bring it to the council's attention. And I thought whether it's included in some type of modification in the future code or provide some guidance from the Department of State uh, and the Division of Building Code and Standards about fabricator approval and what is acceptable as far as third party accreditation and approval. So uh, that's all I have to say, and I, I just thank you for your time. Thanks, Tom. We will uh, we'll be in touch. Any others? And that is it. Are there any other uh, members of the public wishing to address the council today? Raise their hand. Okay, public comment is closed. That takes us to agenda item eight, where I announce our meeting schedule for next year. We're looking at March 4th, June 24th, September 23rd, and December 9th, which nicely gives me at least a week between Thanksgiving and our meeting. <laughs> okay, that's, uh, you know, please mark your calendars and uh, that moves us to agenda item nine. Is there any other business to come before the council today? All right, none from the members, staff is good. Okay, I'm gonna take, I know it's been a long meeting, but I'm gonna take a quick chair's prerogative here. Uh, I'm gonna take a moment before we adjourn uh, to thank the members and the staff for their hard work this year. Uh, it's been a long year. Uh, we're still working our way through this pandemic, which makes things just that much more difficult, but these guys are great and you guys are great and I really appreciate it. Um, I guess, with that, I will wish everyone a happy, safe, uh, and healthy holiday season. Uh, we'll see you in uh, 22 when we uh, not only probably do a, a, a bunch more of these approvals, but uh, also uh, begin our core function of updating the code again. All right, uh, with that, I'll make a motion to adjourn. Uh, all those in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 Anybody want to keep going?
All right. If not, have a great holiday season, everyone. Thank you so much. And the meeting is now closed.